Before I go ahead and jump right on into the tutorial, I just wanted to quickly gloss over the different materials that I'll be using to create this crochet mesh shruggy or sleeves. First and foremost, I will be using some 100% cotton yarn. This is just a really nice soft fiber. There's not a ton of stretch to it. To me, this is kind of like a DK weighted yarn. And for this tutorial, I will actually be double stranding. So make sure that when we jump into the tutorial that I will be using two separate strands of the same fiber and double stranding them like so. Along with the DK weighted yarn, I'm also going to be using a 6.5 millimeter crochet hook. These are just some of my most recent custom resin hooks. So again, this is a 6.5. Going along with this hook, of course, I do need some scissors, a darning needle, and a handy dandy measuring tape just to take your own body measurements and make this to your own correct body size. So now that we have the materials, let's go ahead and dive into the tutorial. In order to crochet these cute little sleeves, we only need to take two body measurements. The first measurement that we need to take reaches from armpit to armpit. Make sure that you are allowing for enough wiggle room and stretch. The second measurement that we need to take reaches from the lowest part of our shoulder down to the under part of our armpit. Using my very first measurement of approximately 17 and a half inches, I'm going to grab my yarn. And as I mentioned earlier, I do want to double strand with my DK weighted yarn. So I'm going to start off with a basic slip knot. Make sure to leave a nice long tail to weave in later. And I'm going to insert my 6.5 millimeter crochet hook. I'm going to create a starting chain with any odd number. And again, I do want this odd number to reach to about the 17 and a half inches. So I'm just gonna start by chaining and measuring it up against my measuring tape. So with my measurements of 17 and a half inches, I've created a starting chain of 49 stitches. And this is what I'm gonna to stick to for the entire front and back panel. So now that I have those 49 stitches, I'm gonna insert my hook once more. And for this pattern, I will be using triple crochets. Following my 49th chain, I'm gonna go ahead and chain an extra four stitches because these are gonna be my turning chains. So there's one, two, three, and four. So let's go ahead and get started on row one of our mesh pattern. For row one, I'm going to yarn over once and twice, and I'm going to add a triple crochet into the fifth chain from my hook. So I'm gonna count one, two, three, four, and five. I'm gonna insert my hook and pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, and one last time, yarn over and pull through two. So disregarding these initial chain of four, this is my first triple crochet in the row. From here, I'm going to chain one and skip one stitch, yarn over twice, and place a triple crochet into the second chain space. Pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, and yarn over and pull through two. So I'm really just repeating these triple crochets across the entire row, but I will always chain one and skip one and place a triple crochet into the second chain space. Again, chain one and skip one stitch, yarn over twice and place a triple crochet into the second available chain space and again chain one skip one place a triple crochet so i'm going to be repeating this across the entire row i'm coming up here to the end of row one and i still have one more stitch left to place as you can see i have two chain spaces left so i'm going to chain one skip one and place a triple crochet into that very last stitch and this is gonna finish out row one. So at this point, this is what your beginning row should look like. Let's go ahead and move on to row two. Now this is a really fun and easy pattern because after you guys learn row one, every single row after that is just a repeat of row one over and over until you can get the front panel as long as you would like it. So to go ahead and start on row two, I'm gonna start off with a chain of four because again, this is going to build up that height for the triple crochets. So here is my chain of four. 
then go ahead and turn my work around. And to begin crocheting row two, I'm going to yarn over twice, find that very first stitch in the row, and place my first treble crochet. And as you'll notice, each treble crochet is going to be placed directly on top of itself. So unlike a standard mesh pattern where you place the trebles into the chain spaces, I'm actually going to be working these stitches directly on top of each other. So after this initial triple or treble crochet, I'm going to chain one and skip one and place my next treble crochet directly on top of the stitch prior. So following that same pattern, it is still chain one, treble crochet, chain one, treble crochet. But as you can see, they're gonna be stacked directly on top. So again, I can chain one, skip one, yarn over and place my treble into the second stitch. And again, chain one and skip one, yarn over twice, and pick up the second stitch available, which also happens to be directly on top of that treble crochet. So at this point, I can pretty much continue on with that same pattern for the rest of row two, row three, and so on. So I really like this cute little take on a mesh pattern. It's extremely beginner friendly, very, very simple to follow along. And as I mentioned, you can create this front and back panel to as long as you would prefer. You can make a whole sweater out of it, or if you guys are like me, you can just leave it at the sleeves. But that is basically the pattern. This is what two rows of the mesh pattern is looking like so far. And I'm starting to come up here to the end of row two. So as you can see, I've just left off with my very last treble or triple crochet. I still have one more to place in the row. So I'm gonna go ahead and chain one and skip one. And looking here for the very last stitch, it can get a little bit confusing because we do have this starting kind of chain to build up that height. So what I'm gonna do is just look right here for that triple or treble crochet and pick up the very two top loops and place the very last triple crochet. Now I know some of you guys don't like my little technique of using these building height chains, but once we start sewing everything together, you will not be able to see these at all. In theory, it's all gonna blend together and you're not gonna be able to tell the start from the end of the row. So let's go ahead and move on to row three and just recap this pattern one last time. To start row three, I'm gonna start with a chain of four. Here is that chain of four. I can go ahead and turn my work. And now to start on row three, I'm gonna yarn over twice, find the very first stitch in the row and pick up the very top of that stitch. And this is where my first treble crochet will go. So following that, we're gonna chain one, skip one, and place a treble crochet into the second stitch. And by second stitch, I am referring to the chain space and then the stitch that we place it into, so don't get confused. Again, I'm gonna chain one, skip one, which is that chain space, and pick up the second stitch, which is the top of the treble crochet. So this is a really, really repetitive pattern. But I hope you guys are able to catch on at this point. So I'm gonna continue on with this pattern and I do want to build up these front and back panels to that second measurement that we took starting at the very top of our shoulders to the very base of our armpits. So I'm just gonna work up a few more rows and I will check back in with you guys just to give you further measurements on my panels. All right, so at this point, I have gone ahead and finished up my first front panel. As you can see, I have done a total of six rows. And let's go ahead and give you guys some quick measurements because I know you're going to ask. Referring back to the second measurement that we need to create this little mesh pattern, I have reached here from zero all the way to exactly six and a half inches. So my front panel is done, it's completed, and it's ready to go. And at this point, you guys can go ahead and make a second matching panel so that we can have a front and a back. And at that point, we can go ahead and move on to attaching them together and moving on to the sleeves. 
I've taken a little bit of time and I have just finished up my second panel. It's time to attach our panels at the upper and bottom corners so that we can start working in the round on our sleeves. So what I'm gonna do is use the little tails I have left when I cut off my yarn and tied off my knot. And I'm just gonna go ahead and grab a darning needle, weave it through both of our two tails here. And I'm just going to tie off a knot from the front to the back panel so that they are officially attached and in the round. And I'm gonna go ahead and repeat that here on the bottom corner. To make this a little bit easier on myself, I'm just gonna flip the panel around so that I have tails for both the upper corner and the bottom corner and I don't have to go attaching any extra yarn. So now that I officially have both my upper and bottom corners connected, as you can see, they are in the round. Before I go ahead and start working on the actual sleeves, I'm just gonna take the few ends that I have left, and I do wanna stitch together about four stitches worth or so on both the left and the right hand side. Again, it doesn't really matter what, which side you would like the upper and the bottom portion because it is symmetrical all the way around. So I'm just going to head up here to the top right corner. I'm just going to take the ends that I still have attached to my project and once more I'm just going to thread them through my darning needle and again I just want to close off about three or four treble crochets worth just so that there is a little bit or somewhat of a shoulder section and that way it's not completely falling off of our body. Feel more than free to close off even more stitches so that this is more closed around your neckline. Again, you'd probably just wanna measure the base of your neck and leave about 10 or so inches open, but I just want this to be very lightweight and ethereal. So I just wanna close off about four treble crochets worth. So I'm just gonna make sure to grab both the front and back loops on the back panel and the front and back loops on the front panel and just pull my darning needle through. And for the little chain one sections, I will do my best to kind of wiggle through my work and pick up whatever stitch I can find available. It does not have to be perfect because it's gonna be kind of seamless once you're wearing it. But again, I'm just picking up both stitches on the back and the front panels and bringing my needle through. All right, look at that. I now officially have somewhat of a shoulder seam going on here. So let's go ahead and move on to the sleeves. Now really quickly, I just wanna explain how I will be placing my treble crochets along the arm section. So what I'm gonna do once I have created a little chain is I do want to place treble crochets at the very base of a stitch and also at the very top of a stitch. So you guys will see as I work through here in a few moments, but everywhere that I have kind of like the little base of a treble crochet, that is where I will be placing any future treble crochets. It's gonna be very, very simple. So let's go ahead and start working on row one for the sleeves, starting right here where my yarn has been tied off. I'm just gonna insert my hook into the very chain space or very last stitch in the row. And I'm going to start off with a chain of five. Now the chain of five is going to consist of a treble crochet and a chain one space. As you guys know, I don't typically prefer to use this method, but when we're working with a mesh pattern in the round, it does look a lot more seamless and continuous if the first four chains do count as a stitch. So for the sleeve section, I'm here to say that the chain four will count as a treble crochet. Let's go ahead and begin on row one. I'm gonna insert my hook, pull up a loop, and at this point for the start of the row, I want to begin with a chain of five. So here is one, two, three, four, and five. And again, the chain of five counts as a treble crochet and the chain one space in between the two trebles. At this point, I can go ahead, yarn over twice, and look for the very base of the treble crochet stitches. It's just this open little gap right here. So I'm gonna pick up that chain space and place my first or my second treble crochet in the row. At this point, again, chain one, skip the body of the stitch and look for the next base or hole section. 
and insert and place another treble crochet. Again, I'm just gonna do this for the entirety of row one, but I do wanna show you something once I hit the shoulder seam or the very top section of the two panels. As you can see, I'm starting to come up to that shoulder seam where we connected the front and the back panels. And I have previously worked this pattern where if I only place one treble crochet right here at the very center seam, the sleeves do tend to get a little bit tight, again, because we are working with mesh. So what I'm gonna wanna do is place an increase stitch into this shoulder seam right here. So what I'm gonna do here after my last treble crochet, I'm going to chain one, yarn over twice, and again, right here at that very base of the treble crochets, I'm gonna go ahead and place, just like normal, another treble crochet, and chain one. And now right here, right after the treble crochet, again, I'm gonna yarn over twice, and just find another good spot to insert my hook, and place another treble. I know that these are a little bit close to another, but again, as we're working in the round, we do need this space for this to not become too constricting on our arms. So I am going to keep that extra little treble right there and then just continue on with that pattern. So chain one and look for the next gap or base stitch. As I'm starting to approach the very bottom section of my panel, I am going to work another treble crochet right into the base of that chain space right there. And as you can see, we are coming up to that chain five section. So I'm just going to chain one, place a treble crochet again into that very bottom or last stitch in the row. And now at this point, I can go ahead and connect to my starting chain. So what I'm gonna do is chain one to leave a nice little gap here underneath our arms. And I'm gonna slip stitch into the fourth chain. So I'm just gonna count very carefully here. One, two, three, and four. I'm gonna pick up and slip stitch my row closed. And you do wanna make sure to check that there is still that chain one space in between the two trebles and that you're not picking up the wrong stitch. So now we can go ahead and move on to row two. We're gonna follow the same exact steps, but I'm gonna walk you through it again one more time. So here at the very start of the row, I'm going to start with a chain of five. Here's one, two, three, four, and five. And at this point, I can go ahead and flip my work around because we do want to turn our work at the end of every single row. And just to recap, the chain of five consists of a treble crochet and the chain one space. So at this point, I can go ahead, yarn over twice and look for the first or the next treble crochet in my row. And just carrying on with that mesh pattern, place your trebles directly on top of your previous trebles. As you can see here, this is gonna be the very first treble in the row. So again, I can chain one, skip one stitch, and work a treble into the second stitch available. And chain one, skip one, and place my treble directly into the top of that stitch. And I'm just gonna carry on like this for the entire row until I reach back to that chain five. All right, so I'm back and as you can see, I have finished working up my first sleeve. For my arm length and my body size, I decided to go with a total of 19 rows. If you guys have longer arms than me or shorter, feel free to just try on your little sleeve, your little shruggy, see if you need to add more or just frog your work and take out less rows. But for me, I decided to go with a total of 19 rows. And once I finish up this one side, you can go ahead, follow those same exact steps and move on to your other sleeve. Again, just go ahead and connect a new yarn at the very bottom section of your sleeves and crochet with that mesh stitch. But again, after I added this very first row with that increase at the top shoulder section, I didn't add any more increases for the rest of the sleeve. I just worked in the round. And again, this is 19 rows. So at this point, your sleeves are fully complete. All that you have left to do is go in by hand and weave in your little ends.